Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So for this tutorial, I am using the same techniques that I used for the video that I uploaded last Friday, only used in a different way. Last week's technique was called a ghost swipe. This week I am doing just a pour. So I will be using a lot of painting terminology, but just remember that this is just the terminology and I am just using these same techniques using edible mediums. So if this sounds interesting, stick around and we'll get right to it. So to do my painting or my pour, I need to create the surface that I'm going to make it on. And what I'm using is quarter inch foam core board covered in adhesive contact paper. Now what this is going to do is make it so that I can reuse this board if I choose to in the future. And it just makes the whole process a whole lot easier. Just measure and cut this to the size you need and stick it to your board. Now to make the painting, what we are using is actually mirror glaze. And these are my ingredients for the mirror glaze. I will attach a link in the description on how, what the recipe is. But to begin with, we just need to mix, we need to bloom our gelatin, which just, you add your water to your gelatin and you let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then in the meantime, we combine the rest of our ingredients that will be, like I said, in the description box and mix them, whisk them together and bring them to a simmer. When it starts to bubble, you know that it's time to go ahead and add your bloomed gelatin into this mixture and just stir it, mix it around until the gelatin has completely dissolved. And then I'm adding some melted white chocolate. This makes this mirror glaze really yummy. This is a Chell Sweets um, recipe and it's really good. I highly suggest going and watching her video on how she makes it also. And then I just went ahead and I put it, poured it through the sieve to remove any excess chunks of um, white chocolate that did not melt. And then just wrap it up with saran wrap and set it to the side till you're ready to work with it. Now this is just acetate sheets. And this is also a very important part on how to make this technique. Uh, I just cut those to the size of the top of the cake and then I did cut a long piece of acetate that is the height and the circumference around the cake. And that's that piece right there. I rolled out my fondant to about mm, maybe, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch thickness. You do not need it real thick for this technique. Use some shortening to attach your acetate sheets to the fondant and cut out the excess. You don't need those excess pieces and you can just remove those. Now I am just spreading some shortening onto the fondant. Now fondant, you work shortening into your fondant when you are conditioning it so it is not going to hurt the fondant. You're not going to taste it. All it does is make it pliable and it actually gets absorbed into the fondant. Now we're just melting our mirror glaze to a temperature. I had to remelt it honestly because I had let it sit. But we want it to be between 100 and 110 degrees when we are working with it. That is warmer than you typically would use a mirror glaze. Typically that is, I believe it's 80 degrees, maybe 90 degrees that you um, have it to pour onto your cake so that it sticks to the cake. But since we are doing this technique separately, we need it thinner. When you do an acrylic pour, you need your paint to be thinned down. So you need the same um, consistency with the mirror glaze. I'm just adding my food colors to getting their gel food coloring to get it to the colors that I want. Gel food coloring works just great. And once I have made sure that the temperature is correct on this, I just went ahead and I poured it on to my piece of fondant and just spread it around with your palette knife. When you do an acrylic pour, you have to have a base coat of your paint so that your paint that you um, pour on top of it will spread around without getting caught up on your canvas and the same goes for your fondant so you do need that layer on the bottom and then i just use the blowtorch or the creme brulee torch to remove air bubbles just like an acrylic painting these techniques are exactly the same if you have acrylic painting uh pour experience experiment or i'm sorry experience this is the same thing 
Now I'm just using my spoon to randomly place the colors. So this is technically called a dirty pour. There are uh, quite a few different ways to do a pour. And I would like to experiment some more with some others, maybe doing a flip cup, some, there's so many different techniques. And the difference between working with this and working with acrylic is that this does set up faster. It gets thicker and stickier faster than acrylic paint, by far faster than acrylic paint does. So you do need to work, uh, work fairly quickly with this. And then just go ahead and tilt it from side to side, front to back, until you get it to looking the way that you want it to. And remove air bubbles with your creme brulee torch as needed. Now don't be afraid to let this product um, fall off, not fall off, but uh, get dumped off of your fondant. You only need a thin coat of this. As long as you can see it on there, you're fine. You don't need the excess anyways. And guys, if you hear my son in the background, I apologize. He's playing a video game with his earphones and he can't hear me. I keep telling him to be quiet, but he's not. I am sorry. And then we did the same thing with our top piece. I did accidentally did not get footage of that, but it is exactly the same technique used on the top. Now we're gonna cover our cake with some buttercream. You can use buttercream or you can use chocolate ganache. Either one works. And go ahead and just remove your excess. And then the next day, seriously, the next day, um, is when we're gonna work with this product. You need to let it set up in your freezer at least overnight because you want your product, the mirror glaze, to not stick to your finger when you touch it. You want it to be set up really nice. Otherwise, this whole technique will not work. Now go ahead and remove it from your board and then take the acetate sheet off of the back and stick it to your buttercream. Now you can add some shortening to your buttercream if you want to, but I had some condensation since I removed it from the refrigerator, so it stuck just fine without it. And I'm just cutting off the excess. So we got a pretty good start there. And this is how we're gonna transfer onto the side. Here's the trick. You add shortening to another piece of acetate the same size, if not a little longer, than your one that's underneath your fondant. And this is why it needs to be set up because if you do not let it set up before you attach that piece, when you go to remove that, your mirror glaze is gonna stick and you're gonna ruin the whole effect. So plan ahead, do that first part the day before, at least the day before, before. You can even do it a couple of days before. Now flip it over onto the back side and attach some brush on some um, piping gel is what I got used to get it to stick to the buttercream. In hindsight, you can brush it onto your buttercream instead of the sheet of um, fondant. Might make it a little easier. Either way works fine. And also since this has had time to set up and firm, you can use your hands to smooth it onto the cake. And just go ahead and remove some of that, that end piece from the acetate and cut off I mean from the fondant, and cut off where the two pieces meet. And you're gonna butt those pieces together. And when you remove this acetate, since it has the shortening on it, it removes very easily. Just take your time, because it might wanna pull away from your buttercream a little bit. And just go ahead and make sure that it is stuck firmly to your buttercream. Now I did do some foam balls that I just dipped in some chocolate. Some actually, it's um, candy melts. And then once those set up, I just sprayed them with an airbrush. And this is my inspiration for the gold. I just wanted to show that. That's my phone case, and that's kind of the look I was going for here. This gold that I'm using that I used on the styrofoam balls and that I'm brushing on is just edible luster dust, gold luster dust, mixed with some Everclear. And now I'm gonna spray the shine, the gloss finish, and what I'm using is confectioner's glaze. I found that this gave the perfect gloss finish to the whole technique here. Now, if you like more of a matte finish to your acrylic paintings, uh, go ahead and, and don't do anything. You don't really need anything if you, that's not the look you're going for, but I was going for the high sheen gloss, almost epoxy, looking finish. 
And then I went back in, and since I used the sponge to kind of smooth that on the first coat before I sprayed it again, um, some of my gold got dulled, off, dulled, dulled out and kind of removed. So I just went back in on top of the confectioner's glaze once it had dried and just painted that gold again. And I'm so glad I did because that really made that pop. And once you your um, glaze has firmed up and you are got that gold on there, go ahead and just add your gold spheres. And I found that I did not need to add anything to it because mirror glaze is still a little tacky. It's not stickier at this point, but it's still a little tacky enough so that your decorations will stick without having to add anything to them. Especially on the side, which is nice. They just... I didn't need any help, so I didn't add anything to them. Now, just when your customer comes to pick up this cake, if you do this for a customer or for a fan, friends and family, just go ahead and remind, make sure that they know that they are, those these spheres are made out of um, foam, and there are toothpicks. Just to be on the safe side, communication is key in situations like this. You can go ahead and make those with chocolate if you want, or you can even roll up balls of fondant, whatever you prefer to do. But since this is clearly and specifically just for demonstration and tutorial purposes, I went ahead and used the foam balls. You can do it either way that you want. And there's our finished product. Look at the shine. That worked out really well with that confectioner's glaze, and I'm so glad I used it. So. I hope you got some inspiration from this and go ahead and take the time to look back on the other video that I uploaded with the same technique. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video and if you'd like to watch some other videos go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here and if you would like to check out my other social media I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name Sophisticates by Mary and please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.